had a rapture dream recently. Um, I've actually had two total. The first one I have was over two months ago, and I was not sure if it came from the Lord. So I've been praying about it and asking God to give me another one if he was truly coming soon and he was trying to tell me. Um, and I also promised him that if he did give me another rapture dream that I would share it. Uh, this is my first YouTube video and I'm not very good in front of the camera, but I will do my best. So here it goes. So my first dream that I had, um, it was, like I said, two months ago, and I was driving in the desert with this girl, and we were driving in this truck, and I was in the passenger seat. She was driving. We were both the same age, uh, so we're driving through the desert, and all of a sudden, we come upon a sea of cars, like there's thousands of cars and we're all just stopped, like we couldn't move forward. And I look up in the sky and everyone's eyes are looking up at the sky like this. So I get out of the car and I'm still looking up and the sky is like beautiful colors of purples, blues, orange the sun was blood orange in my dream um and i remember looking up and all of a sudden out of nowhere this sandstorm or like natural disaster earthquake it wasn't like a bomb explosion but it was like a consuming sand and I just remember being pulled up, like completely consumed by the sandstorm. And the girl that I was with, I should probably mention that she was not a believer. Um, she was, you know, agnostic. She, she didn't believe in the gospel. And I knew that in my dream. So I'm being separated. I'm literally being consumed by like this cloud of... It was like elements from the earth, like the earth's elements, sand, wind. And the girl that I was with, she says, oh, it's an alien invasion because I was taken away along with hundreds of other, other people, but she was left. Like I remember we were separated and in scripture, it talks about one woman will be sewing at the mill and taken the other one left. Um, it says one man will be left in his sleep, the other one taken. So I'm probably butchering the scripture, which I really don't want to do. But that's what it reminded me of. I just knew that we were being separated. And then my dream ended. So I woke up and I did not know if it came from the Lord because I didn't see Jesus. I didn't hear a trumpet. I just... I knew that the rapture was happening, but I guess I needed more clarity. I needed more clarification. So for the past two months, I've been praying to get another rapture dream. And I've just been praying, Lord, if you are truly coming soon, please, please, please give me another, another dream. And I want to see you. I want to, to know that it's coming from you. Like, I don't want any question about it, that it is not from you. And I wrote down this scripture verse. It's Matthew 7, 7. And it says, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. So because I've been praying about this for, like I said, over the past eight weeks, um, again, God doesn't have an exact timeline according to my plan. It's according to his plan. 
So I also knew that if I were to get a second dream, that there are repercussions of being gifted something like that because my spirit was very heavy after I received the second dream. It was like I was very joyful because I was going and uh, my best friend was going with me, but there's a heaviness that comes with that um, after the people who are left behind. So in my dream, I had it about two nights ago and I'll start from the beginning. So I'm in my old office building and there's my coworkers there. I didn't really recognize them. Um, just like some people that I work with that I, you know, see in passing. And all of a sudden, like I'm inside the building, but the building did not have a ceiling. I don't know if it was like torn off or I could just see up in the clouds that the sky was full of these fluffy clouds. And all of a sudden, the clouds started moving like rapidly, like they were like racing down the sky, across the sky. And the sun was behind the clouds. So as the clouds are moving rapidly, it parts in the middle where the sun is at and I hear the trumpet sound. And it was incredible. It was like parting like the Red Sea, like the clouds were just parting and the sun was coming through like this bright light. And it, it was like this big movie screen, but it wasn't a movie screen. It was like the heavens were opening up and I saw Jesus from behind. I did not see his face, but I saw him coming down the clouds with his angels. His back was to me. So his angels were facing us, but his back was turned. Like he was like this, like this. And as they were coming down, they were all singing. They were all singing hymns and Jesus was conducting them like an orchestra, like this. And so again, I just saw his back because he was, he was turned and he was conducting his orchestra. But from behind, I saw his like shoulder length, brown curly hair blowing in the wind. And they were all singing praises to him. And as soon as I saw him coming, I look up and me, along with other people in the building that were believers, we stood up and we lifted up our hands and we were like, Jesus. And we started singing with them just like that, like just stretching out our hands like Jesus. And we were singing and I don't remember what songs we were singing, but it was like the most beautiful sound I've ever heard. And the more that we sung, the higher notes we hit, it was like flashes of light were coming down from heaven. Like, you know, when you hit a high note and I'm not a good singer, but in my dream I was, I was like singing with no hesitation, nothing. And I just remember I was so joyful and I was so happy. And as this is going on, all of a sudden my dream starts slowing down. It starts going in slow motion. And my one of my best friends, Victoria, she was there. And kind of her backstory is she was raised Catholic. Um, she's come to know Jesus, but I still think that she's holding on to some of that legalism of not knowing if she's saved. Um, she does love the Lord and she's accepted him into her heart, but she did not know what was going on. So essentially... I'm explaining that we are about to be raptured. And she was very happy, but she was scared. Like she was very scared because she was not ready to leave her family and friends behind. And her family and friends, um, like I said, she comes from a Catholic background. So she was asking me about the Catholic faith and um, praying to Mary. 
And in my dream, I remember telling her that, you know, Mary is a righteous woman and she's in heaven, but she is not God. And God says that you are to not have any other gods before me. Jesus is it. Jesus is the only way. So I'm explaining this to her. And then the scene changes. So we're no longer in the office building. We go from the office building to now we're outdoors. And again, this is happening in like slow motion. So Jesus is still coming. Um, but I'm like having to explain to, to people to repent. So we're outside and all of a sudden the, the sky turns completely black. Like there's no stars in the sky. And then the moon, I look up at the moon and the moon was like burned out. It was like, like seared. Like it was like, you know, when you, you light like a charcoal on fire and it, it just, it, when it burns out, like it kind of turns to dust. Um, that's what the moon was like. And the moon was not giving its light. And it even says, let me find it. In Mark 13, 24, it says, But in these days, after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. So there's no light. It was very dark. And people on the street are screaming, the ones that are not believers. Um, they're just screaming in panic. And I am completely calm, but I know what's about to take place. It was like God was showing me that this is the start of tribulation before we're taken up with him. So I pull out my phone and I text my boyfriend, Tony. Now, backstory real quick. This is a whole nother story, but um, I became a Christian after Tony and I started dating. And Tony is not a believer. And I've been telling him that Jesus is coming. Um, within the past few months, I've been telling him that Jesus is on his way back. So in my dream, I texted him because he was nowhere to be found. I don't know where he was. And I texted him and I said, Jesus is coming now in all caps, just like that. Jesus is coming now. And I sent it to him. And then I look over at Victoria and she's pacing back and forth on the sidewalk crying, like just panicking. And she's like, I want to go. I want to go. I want to be with Jesus, but I'm so scared of like leaving my family behind. And I just grabbed her and I like wrapped her in my arms like this. And I told her, I said, these things must take place. And just like that. And I don't know what else I was trying to tell her, but that's what I said to her. So then my dream ended and I, when I woke up, my alarm went off like three minutes after I woke up. So I know that that came from the Lord because I had been asking him to show me if this is truly going to take place. And since I've had that dream, I've seen more and more signs of his coming. Um, I, I work and I, I train people. So I saw someone had typed in rapture. Like they typed in the words, oh, did, did everyone get raptured um, when they all went to their lunch break? And I was like, okay, there's that word again. <laughs> like what? Okay, God, like, are you serious? Are you really coming? So, and before I had that dream, if I would be driving, I'd be like, you know, talking to Jesus and, and I'm like, Jesus, are you really coming soon? And then I'd see a sign that says like, ready, set, go. Or I'd see a sign Right as I'm saying this to him, I'm praying it. I'm like, Lord, are you coming? And it says, buckle up. So, you know, maybe I sound crazy. I don't really care if I sound crazy because I know in my heart that he's coming. Um, I don't, no one can set dates. No one knows when the Lord is coming. However, I do, I do think that it, it possibly could be in our lifetime. I don't know the year. No man knows the day nor the hour, 
but the Lord does say, does say that we would know the season. So I want to read another scripture regarding when that day comes. Let's see. Let me find my place. Okay. So it is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And then chapter 5. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are children of light and of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. So those are my dreams. Um, like I said, I'm not a YouTube star. I don't even know if this is going to reach very many people. I don't really care if it does. Um, I do feel like the Lord has laid it on my heart to share it and to be obedient by sharing it. And I just, I just pray for whoever is watching this video. If you are not sure that you are going in the rapture, I just plead the blood of Jesus that you will continue to seek him. And you will continue to ask him to reveal himself to you because he will. For me, it took a very long time for me to fully surrender to him. Um, that's a whole nother story, my testimony. But I pray for all of you. Jesus loves you. He's coming and he's coming quickly. Amen.